Okay, so let's continue with what we did last time. Um, U is a function of rho and phi, the temperature. Uh, phi is given by the Sternoville problem, given here. And notice that the equation in R is a Cauchy-Weiler type. So if it's not obvious, again, look at the generic form of the Cauchy-Weiler equation that we discussed last time in the, in the previous lecture. Because you have to be careful to adapt yourself with different notations, right? So I mean, in the in that case, we denoted the uh, dependent variable by y, y as a function of x, right? So then that's the standard form of the Cauchy-Weiler type. Here we have r as a dependent variable and rho the variable. So instead of y, you have r. Instead of x, you have rho. But pay attention to the relationship between the coefficient power, I'm sorry, the coefficient of rho, um, um, the, the exponent of rho, and um, the order of the derivative. They are in agreement, right? So rho squared r double prime, rho r prime, and then r by itself with some coefficient. Um, so it is a Cauchy-Weiler type. And to make it clear, if it's not that already, the actual coefficients in my case are a equals 1, b equals 1, c equals minus lambda. So may pause and make sure I understand this uh, before we moving, move on with uh, solving the PDE. Um, so the constant coefficients are 1, 1 minus lambda. And then make sure you have the um, formula for solving the Cauchy-Weiler equation in front of you when the time comes to, to solve the, uh, this equation in R. Now, the equation in phi, again, should be familiar. At this point, you should be able to pull up the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions um, immediately. Again, if, if you still need a refresher, remember the standard form of this Sturmovil problem on the interval 0c. Right, so I mean, if you have x between zero and a constant c, uh, and the uh, the problem is x double prime plus lambda x equals zero, uh, with homogeneous conditions, right? So if um, if you have um, x of zero equals x of c equals zero, um, the eigenvalues are n pi over c squared. And the eigenfunctions are sine n pi x over c. I shouldn't have squeezed it here, but let me actually, let me write it again here. So lambda n would be n pi over c squared eigenfunctions given by the sines of n pi x over c. We simply have to adapt this to our uh, eigenvalue problem. Instead of big X, we're going to have phi. And instead of C, we're going to have pi over 2. So look carefully. In our case, the eigenvalues, lambda n, are n pi divided by C, which is pi over 2 squared. <clears throat> that means if you simplify, the eigenvalues are 2n quantity squared. And the eigenfunctions, which we're going to call them phi n, in accordance to the notation in the problem, are sine of um, n pi over c x, right? Which comes out as 2n phi, right? So instead of x, you have phi, sine, sine of 2n uh, phi. So these are the eigenfunctions and the eigenvalues. Um, with for each eigenvalue, so for each lambda n, we're going to solve the R equation. Okay, so the R equation, if we plug in um, the eigenvalues, would be rho squared R double prime plus rho R prime minus 2n squared R equals 0, together with the initial condition R of 1 equals 0. This is of a Cauchy-Weiler type, as we mentioned already. The coefficients, again, are 1, 1, minus lambda, which is, in our case, minus 2n squared. 
So the characteristic equation for the Cauchy-Euler equation Remember, in general, it's a r squared plus b minus a r plus c equals zero, which in our case leads to r squared b minus a is zero plus c, which is uh, minus two n squared. Um, so this one basically becomes r squared minus 2n squared equals 0. And you are, again, it's very important to have the recipe of solving the cauchy euler equation in front of you. Otherwise, if you don't remember it, it won't make sense, right? But you are in the first case of that solution format when you have two distinct roots for the characteristic equation, 2n and minus 2n, right? So this factors into uh, r minus 2n r plus 2n. And the solution uh, in that case, so that means rn of rho, right? I mean, I'm going to call the solution rn because, again, you solve basically an equation for each n, right? For each um, uh, eigenvalue. I should mention here that n varies from 1 to 3 and so on, right? And the constants that come up from that uh, formula for the solution of the Cauchy-Euler equation are also labeled sub n for the same reason. So again, look at the solution. This is going to be a n rho to the power 2n uh, plus b n rho to the power minus 2n. If it's not clear yet, this is basically corresponding to uh, x uh, to the r1, c1, x to the r2, c2. Um, if you look at the, the way we wrote the formula for the um, uh, solution of the Cauchy-Euler equation. <clears throat> okay, at this point, let's impose the remaining, the remaining homogeneous condition. And then finally, we move on with the superposition principle. So, Rn of 1 equals 0, what does that tell me? That tells me In plus Bn equals 0, right? Because 1 to the n is, is 1. Which means Bn is the opposite of An. So we can replace Bn with minus An. So right before the superposition principle, we gather that Rn of rho is a n rho to the 2n minus a n rho to the minus 2n, which we can write in a more compact form if we pull out a n rho to the 2n minus rho to the minus 2n. This is Rn corresponding to each phi n determined before and corresponding to each lambda n. So uh, if, at this point, you should probably pause and review the steps if you uh, want to catch up. Uh, but the remaining part is the superposition principle and then finally dealing with the non-homogeneous condition um, we uh, established prior in the problem. Remember, the non-homogeneous condition is your fourth uh, phi equals phi squared. Um, so let's do that on the second page. Um, so basically, each solution u n that we each pair of the solution, um, each pair of r phi gives you a solution u n in the form of um, r n times phi n. So we get a summation out of this and finally deal with a non-homogeneous condition. So, so let's do that on the second page or the third page, I guess. Um, so we assemble a solution in the form of a series. So u of rho phi is equal to summation from 1 to infinity, rn of rho 
phi n of phi, which in our case, um, Rn is a n rho to the 2n minus rho to the minus 2n, and phi n is sine of 2n phi. Um, the non-homogeneous condition was uh, u of 4 phi, right, because the problem um, says that phi squared is the temperature on the outer edge, so u of 4 phi equals phi squared. So plug in 4 for rho into the solution and match it with phi squared. So that means this leads to the summation from 1 to infinity, a n 4 to the 2n minus 4 to the minus 2n sine of 2n phi. This should be equal to phi squared. <clears throat> Again, we have to be very patient because there are still little quirks to keep in mind from this point on. Remember that the last thing to determine is a n, right? So that this, this is a matching. Um, that means I need a sine Fourier series for phi squared on the interval 0 pi over 2. Okay? Because phi squared needs to be written as a summation in sine of 2n phi. And the coefficients in that summation in that Fourier series will be identical to these coefficients. So a n times this quantity. So I want to emphasize a n is not going to be a Fourier coefficient. This whole thing will be the Fourier coefficient. Because this whole thing is multiplied by sine. And of course, once you match it with the Fourier coefficient, you can get a n by itself and plug it in back into the full solution of the PDN. Okay, so how do I get the... Um, Fourier series from the table. Well, remember, we have tables, but we need to adjust them. <clears throat> so if you look at the table from um, our book, we have already the Fourier sine series for x squared in the interval 0, c. All we have to do is to replace c by pi over 2. And of course, x with phi, because that's our notation for the variable. It, when, you, when you plug in pi over 2 for c, this becomes an x phi, this becomes 2n phi. So let's just do that. You may want to take a look at this while I do this on the on the video, on my uh, my notes. So let's copy again the left side. So phi squared in terms of um, that Fourier series is 2c squared. Remember, c is pi over 2. And summation from 1 to infinity, uh, we have a parenthesis here, minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n pi, minus 2, 1 minus negative 1 to the n over n pi third, sine of 2 and phi. So we're going to match the coefficient a n times this parenthesis with the coefficient, including this guy on the left, outside the sum, this coefficient of the sine 2 n, uh, 2 n phi. So a n will come from this equation. Now, 2 pi squared over 4, this simplifies to pi squared over 2. And obviously, to get a n, we're going to divide by, by, by that parenthesis. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to attach it to this. Pi squared over 2 divided by this gives me that a n is pi squared over 2 quantity 4 to the 2 n 
minus 4 to the minus 2n times this parenthesis. Now, once you determine a n, remember, you can leave the problem like this. You can consider this the last step, because I know that there's lots of stuff to write. Um, but technically, if you really want to uh, write a full solution, I mean, you know, as a point of satisfaction, if you want that, he, you know, here's the original problem, here's the solution, you would have to take the time to, again, plug in a n back all the way back into the solution over here. Okay, um, so let's just do that. So the full solution to the PDE or the steady state temperature is a summation from one to infinity, a n, which is pi squared over two, four to the two n minus four to the minus two n. Uh, so that's a n, that's further multiplied by rho to the two n minus, uh, oh, I forgot, um, I've got this portion here, but I'll, I'll just do it right now because it's commutative after, after all. So a n is this times this parenthesis. And of course, times uh, sine of 2 n phi. Okay. So that's the full solution of the steady state temperature in the form of a series. I want you to pay attention to this portion here because if you look at the answers in the problem in the homework, you may see these terms and you may not know where they come from. So again, I mentioned before, the fact that the book provides you the final answer can be very confusing if you look at it too early and try to figure out how you get to that. Just really force yourself not to do that because it is not obvious until you go through lots of lots of steps in the problem where that comes from. So for example, this four comes obviously from this step here when you, when you plug in um, uh, four for rho into, the, um, into that series representation. So don't worry too much about the, right an the, the final answer. Just go through the process slowly and then you can analyze the final answer and see if you get the same thing or maybe it's equivalent to the final answer because sometimes there are simplifications done um, that I might not be obvious along the way. So that's it for today. We'll continue with uh, other applications next week.